Karen, let's talk a little bit about, because you've been on the show before, but for people who are new and watching, tell them what you do um, and, and then talk a little bit about what you're going to talk about. Engine Development Manager at CARD. So I um, support, run, and manage research projects. Wonderful. And my other role, I also supervise clients here at CARD as well. I have a couple kids on my caseload. <laughs> which is a fabulous thing. And Karen, um, you're going to be talking with us some, uh, about some research uh, today that I think is, is really fantastic. Talk to us. Sure. So I have um, information from two great research studies to share with you. The first one is all about the language use, because a lot of families speak, to, speak a different language at home from English. So this study is by Natalie Lim and Marjorie Charla, and it's called Effects of English versus Heritage Language on Play in bilingual exposed children with autism spectrum disorder. So autism occurs in all cultures, it's indiscriminate, but unfortunately most of the research is done on English speakers, um, Caucasian individuals. But you know, that's just not the reality of what most kids are living in their homes. So a lot of families have to make a choice of what language to speak with their children, and a lot of professionals recommend using English exclusively. Um, but this really isn't supported by the research. Research shows that bilingual children and monolingual children with autism really don't have a difference in their language delays. And there can even be some benefits for bilingual children. Um, so this current study really looked at instructional language use. So instructing in either the home language or in English for these children. And they took four boys with the diagnosis of autism, who had a home language of either Spanish and Korean or Korean, and they assess play skills. And during these play sessions, sessions were randomly rotated between either English or their home language. And during those sessions, the experimenter either gave a play instruction, a comment, or some sort of praise statement every 30 seconds in that target language for that session. And then what they did is they tracked the play skills that the kids engaged in. You know, how much did they play appropriately with toys? How much did they engage in play with others? And before the instruction started, the children didn't display any of those play behaviors that they were tracking. And after instruction, in both language sessions, kids learned the play skills. And the interesting thing was that the kids displayed more play skills in their home language than in the sessions that were done in English. So my takeaway from this study is speak to your child in your home language if you speak a language other than English at home and even see if you can have some instruction or have some of therapy sessions done in your home language as much as possible. Important study because it, it, we really haven't looked at this in a, I, I certainly hadn't looked at this in a big way, but there are more and more kiddos that English is not their home language right. that and are getting and therapy. And that are bilingual. And um, parents have been asking this question for a long time, though, because for so, as you said, Karen, for so long, um, ABA providers were saying that the sessions needed to happen in English. Mm -hmm. I suspect probably mm -hmm. because there were more English-speaking therapists. Right. Um, but what a wonderful thing to know that they can, they can learn at a either way, mm -hmm. right? So that, that shows that the learning in English is effective, but if it is more effective in the home language, then that gives us a place to shoot for, right? Uh, which is truly wonderful. I, I'm so excited that, that we're looking at this. And so then what else did you want to talk with us about, Karen? Sure. So the second article I have is on a little lighter topic. Um, some researchers, Wesley Dotson and his colleagues, actually studied the TV show Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. And if you've never heard of this show, it's an educational young children's programming show that's kind of based on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So this article is called Evaluating the Ability of the PBS Children's Show Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood to Teach Skills to Two Young Children with Autism Spectrum Disorder. And what they were really focusing on this study is video modeling. And that's a strategy that has a lot of research behind it. And basically, you show a kid a video of someone engaging in a skill to try and teach them that skill. So the question is, can a high quality kids TV show teach skills by video modeling, basically? Um, so in this study, they took two five-year-old children with autism spectrum disorder, and they looked specifically at two skills that were each linked to a Daniel Tiger episode. So there was one episode about trying new foods, and there was a second episode about stopping play when you're directed to do so. And before they show the kids these videos, um, engagement in both of these skills was, was very low, almost zero. 
And for both kids, after showing both of these episodes, the skills really increased and they were able to master these skills just by watching these videos. And while watching these videos, there was an adult present, but the adult wasn't prompting them, wasn't supporting them, wasn't engaging with them during the videos. They were just, you know, responding if the child initiated with them. Um, so this is really exciting to see that this, these episodes were able to teach these kids some skills. And one of the kids did need some support to attend and pay attention to the TV show, which is to be expected. Um, so my takeaway here is, you know, there are always times as a parent, I'm sure you're going to put TV on for your kids. So think about the TV show that you're putting on. You know, Daniel Tiger has been shown in this study, at least for these two episodes, to actually teach kids skills. So if you can take the TV time your kid is engaging in to make it educational, that's really exciting. So yeah. the, the takeaway is, caveat. I'm oh. sorry, Karen, the takeaway is showing your child specifically Daniel Tiger's neighborhood? Yes. And, you know, this is just one study just about Daniel Tiger's neighborhood. It, there isn't research, as far as I know, on other TV shows okay. that are educational. But you were starting to say that there's one yeah. asterisk. Yes. So the American Academy of Pediatrics does make recommendations regarding screen time. And they do say for two to five-year-olds, you should limit that screen time to an hour a day of high-quality programming. There we go. And they do also say screen time shouldn't be alone time. You should be engaging with your child when, you're on, when they're on TV and on screens. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I just want to say, I mean, we love PBS, um, yeah. but Daniel Tiger is a, a spinoff from Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, which was and, so educational. Yes, because Daniel Tiger was one of the puppets um, that Mr. Rogers oh, voiced. Oh, really? Yes. And, um, and that the, the people at PBS who decided to do this spinoff really have, I, I think, hit it out of the park in terms of taking what Fred Rogers, his philosophy of education and building children up and, and building up their spirit right. is included in Daniel Tiger. So I, I would caution parents and say that Daniel Tiger is not indicative of all children's programming, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is honestly what you were saying, Karen. I'm just saying it a little less nicely. Uh, <laughs> like, they're not, it's not even apples and oranges. Right. It's like, you know, a right. really good race car compared to, you know, some cardboard boxes mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. we're talking about. This is high quality television. But very exciting to know that that video modeling, and this is a wake-up call for all of us who have anything to do with television, that this is an opportunity um, for us to make some better programming for children to mm -hmm. be able to help them to learn in addition to other therapies, including a really good quality ABA program. Well, Karen, this is fabulous, and we always enjoy having you with us, and, and we want to thank you and your team for being a part of our show on a monthly basis to help us to uh, be able to tear apart some of the research and, and hone it down to what we really need to walk away with. Great. Thank so, you. Karen, thank you so much for being here. Bye, Karen. Bye.